Hello and welcome to your radiology residency. I thought I would take a moment to introduce you to radiology and start off with a little introduction to myself. Hello, I'm Ian Gray and I wanted to say thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. I wanted to introduce myself and let you know a little bit about me. I was born in Tennessee. I was raised by a family practice doctor and a nurse and given by them kind of a long-term view of medicine and its evolution from the 50s when my dad started practicing through the 90s and then he retired so my medical gap uh, was a little bit there before I went to uh, high school and then college. Uh, I went to Vanderbilt for college, undergraduate, University of Tennessee for uh, medical school and from there I decided to stick around to do a residency at the University of Tennessee slash Methodist program. I chose that program because at the time I was going to be an interventional neuroradiologist and I wanted to cure people's strokes. Um, they had a uh, relatively high volume of interventional at the time and did a large number of four vessel angiograms and even intervention. So I was really excited about the program, stayed there for a few years. Uh, once I finished there, I moved up to uh, Phoenix to uh, complete my neuro training at Barrow. Uh, in the interim, though, it takes so long to make a doctor. Uh, Neurointerventional went from a primarily radiologist-driven uh, practice into a primarily neurosurgical-driven practice. So the positions for radiologists uh, was in the decline, and it was harder for a radiologist to um, secure a footing. Uh, in the uh, practice community. So I decided to be a diagnostic neuroradiologist. I worked in Ohio for a year and then came back. Uh, during that time, I met my beautiful bride. Her name is Lori. Uh, we've had two kids. Um, one kid uh, is five, and uh, he's super cute and a doll. And the other one uh, is six months old. And um, he turns out to be a medical mystery. We're still trying to figure out everything. Uh, but that in itself has given me a... Mm, insider's view into healthcare, or at least uh, an end user's view into healthcare, uh, how we act, how we interact, and uh, how we relay information to people uh, has definitely been something that's on my radar. Of course, uh, the other part is seeing medicine change so quickly over the beginning of my career. I'm really interested in the, uh, the interstitia of radiology. So not just the, the core of radiology, the knowledge of uh, anatomy and diagnosis, but also what makes radiologists radiologists? What makes us good? What makes us bad? Where do we have mistakes? How can we be more efficient? Uh, where's the waste? And so uh, in an attempt to further understand what goes beyond that, I then decided to uh, continue my education while I worked here at the University of Tennessee, um, uh, getting an MBA. I got an MBA through the University of Memphis. Uh, and that brings me up to today. So hopefully what I can do for you is provide you with some uh, knowledge and experience that will kind of accelerate your um, uh, idea of what it is that you're going to be and do in your coming career. So I want to say welcome to radiology and I can't wait to get started. Thanks. But enough about me. The real thing that I need to know is why are you here? What brought you here? What motivated you to be a radiologist? The reason I need to know this is because this information is what's going to carry you on through the trials that you're going to encounter. You're going to have horribly ill patients, patients with horrible disease burdens. You're going to see these patients. These patients are going to be children and elderly and uh, everyone in between. And it's going to be your job to not only help them understand their disease process, but manage through it, at least in the brief interactions where you'll see them. Uh, so you've got to begin with the end in mind. Just picture the future. What do you see yourself being? Do you want to be a, an academic radiologist, a private practice radiologist? Do you want to work hard so you can play hard? Do you want to further the, um, the boundaries of our medical knowledge? Uh, or do you just want to take care of patients and serve them to the best of your ability? Regardless of your motivation, you need to make sure that that is always kept in the forefront of your mind so you don't stop and forget to really work hard now to enjoy the payoff later. So the real question is, is what can, can drive you for four... No, that's not right at all. I'm going to get rid of that. Mm -mm. Uh, for the rest of your life, because this is what you are here to do. But in order to be 
that doctor that you see yourself being in five years, 10 years, 15 years, you have to lay the foundation. In order to be a good doctor, you've got to be a good person. People don't go to doctors and see unhealthy people and want to take their advice. So you have to begin with taking care of yourself. Um, I know that whenever I was in medical school, exercise uh, was kind of a priority, but whenever I hit residency, our work hours were crazy and exercise fell off as a priority. Um, exercise is part of being alive. You really need to focus on it and take time out for yourself, but that's not just for yourself. That's for your patients, for your family, for everybody. 30 minutes a day, at least five times a week. I like to go running. Uh, some people like to swim, bicycling. It doesn't matter what you do. Walking is great. Just do something for 30 minutes a day. Uh, as you exercise, you'll find that all your highs and lows from everyday stress or evened out. And, and that physical exercise will help you with your emotional health. But also strengthening your relationships will help you with your emotional health. Make sure that you devote the appropriate amount of time to your significant other and family. Um, and if you don't have any family, get plugged into the community. Uh, I know that for me at least, I went uh, to a church whenever I didn't know anyone here and made uh, an initial good set of friends that I still value today. Um, financial health is something that you all have to focus on because I can't even imagine what it's like for some of you to have two hundred and fifty to $500,000 in medical student debt just hanging over your shoulders for the next several years. As we see, our income is either plateauing or potentially declining. Honestly, it's hard to predict. Um, you can't plan for ever growth. You really need to focus on how to uh, rein in spending now, and that begins with a budget. So make sure you create a budget. Uh, you know, if you have any questions about how to create a budget, give me a call and ask. Most people uh, really enjoy the uh, zero-based budgets where every dollar coming in has a purpose, uh, you assign it to that purpose, and you don't spend over that. Um, I know that whenever I was a resident, I spent more money on uh, trinkets from Amazon because they were on sale all the time than I should have for sure. So um, make sure that you get your financial house in order, and whenever like money is not a concern... Um, then all of a sudden you're a lot freer to focus on the job that you've chosen as a career. Once you have kind of like the, the basic budget in check, I recommend a Roth IRA uh, now for you guys because uh, you're going to be in the lowest tax bracket that you'll be in for quite a while. Uh, again, if you have questions, please give me a uh, call and ask. And then spiritual health, um, you know, different uh, people do different things. But make sure that you don't uh, sacrifice... Um, your overall well-being uh, for these few years because what you'll do is create habits that you may or may not want to keep. All right, uh, next slide, we hit on good habits for good doctors. So as I talked about before, uh, in order to be a good doctor, you have to be a good person. So make sure that you take care of yourself. And whenever you take care of yourself, it will show and patients will have more faith in you and your uh, expertise and opinion. Um, but with that, you've got to remember that your duty is to best serve your patients. So as you develop your radiology prowess, you've got to remember, what would you do for this patient if they were you or your mother or your kid or um, whomever you care about? You've got to remember that everything you do should be with them in mind. Every word that's on your report should be, in some sense, a way to help them. Um, and then for doctors, I mean, everything is changing uh, there's still a lot of stuff that they just don't teach in medical school, so you have to read. You have to read a lot outside your uh, training, and then whenever you come into work, uh, you just have to work because it's a balance of both work and experience. And I know that the greatest strength that we have as radiologists is that we've seen more chest x-rays than any other type of practitioner. We've seen more CTs, more MRs, more everything. And the experience is what helps you feel comfortable with what you're doing the knowledge that you get from outside reading is what makes you um, better in that uh, periphery. The uh, 99% of the time you will know it already, but for that 1% of the time it will help you figure out how to kind of tear it apart and work at it. And then repeat. you got to read more, you got to work more. The more you, you do in each of these different areas, the better a physician you'll be. So as we continue to lay the foundation to be a, a good radiologist, we start off with being a good person. 
We build on that being a good doctor, someone that takes care of their patients, and then we move on to the habits that make us good radiologists. So the most important thing in your shoes is to relearn anatomy. So much of what we do is we look at anatomy, what variations are acceptable and what are unacceptable and, and verge on into the pathological. So just keep looking at anatomy. And just so you know, not everyone is made like the book. I still see occasionally random muscles that not everybody has. So you'll gain the, uh, the more complete understanding of anatomy by keep on uh, exposing yourself to more scans, seeing more patients, seeing what they all look like. And so really focus on anatomy. If you're watching this before you actually start your first rotation, uh, don't just grab the book for that rotation. Grab an anatomy book and just hit it hard. Because if you understand what parts make up the space that you see that doesn't look right, you'll understand what things can go wrong. Uh, the next thing is, is that radiologists are big into patterns. Whenever you read any given study, you're going to develop a search pattern. But here's the thing that we're incorporating from the, the business, right? Whenever you look at um, uh, really optimizing business practices, there's this continual op, um, attempt to assess how everything's, uh, to make an assessment, review what you're doing, revise it whenever you find mistakes or shortcomings, uh, and then repeat the process. So as you go through each time, you're gonna miss something. And whenever you miss something, you're gonna change your search algorithm in, in order to make it more complete and better for your patient. Uh, but patterns don't just stop with how you look at stuff. They apply to how you report things. They apply to how you pick up additional findings because so many things are associations. Um, whenever you look at data, uh, and I'm a neuroradiologist, so I think a lot about neuroradiological data, but if you don't have any fractures, you're in the most common set of the population. But once you have uh, one fracture, you're at a significantly increased risk for having more than one fracture. So if you have a cervical spine fracture, you want to look everywhere because there's probably more than one fracture. Um, same for like whenever you're a pediatric radiologist, you're going to have to learn a lot of syndromes. Whenever you see somebody's got a pituitary tumor uh, and a thyroid tumor, you want to start looking in the abdomen. Um, there are a lot of different associations that have to be developed, and that's why it's a long program. But that being said, really try to figure out uh, how things are tied together, and if you can, it'll make you a better radiologist and give you a better understanding of what you're seeing. And finally, what I want to say is that uh, you're going to stumble at some point in time during your residency. You're going to miss an important finding. You're going to overcall something important. Uh, and depending on your nature, you may find that this is uh, terrible and devastating, or you may not even care because you do, it, it, during your training, have this safety net of people that are looking over your shoulder. But the thing that I want you to, to know is that failure is not, it's not the end. If you make a mistake, everybody makes mistakes. What you need to know is that if you ever make a mistake, accept it, acknowledge it, and figure out how to not let that happen again. And whenever I talk about this, I'm talking about you know, findings on films, but also just like in your everyday life. If you find that um, you didn't do the reading before a conference in the morning, uh, don't let that set up a bad pattern. Just figure out like what, what happened and how do you keep it from ha happening again. Um, you know, the great thing about the future of radiology is that it's, it's transitioning. And you as uh, like the, the new generation of radiologists are really going to have an opportunity to um, define where we're going to go. And so learn from our mistakes, learn from our predecessors' mistakes, and then develop something new, something better, and something that best serves our patients. So uh, I, I would really like to say that it's not really failure, it's more education. So never forget that every mistake Every failure is an opportunity to learn and improve. All right, thank you very much for your time and attention. Uh, we'll get to the next lecture uh, shortly.